All right, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> as I clear my throat so that I can have a flawless casting. In the bottom right, spawning as the teal Protoss, we have the player who got all the way here to the semifinals. The player who is master level despite not using any hotkeys, or very little of them, it is going to be David Thor. And in the top left-hand corner, as I don't clear my throat because I'm flawless anyway, we have <laughs> Medjilin spawning, the pink Zerg, who is fighting and trying to eliminate, or at least put down into the lower bracket, the only Protoss remaining in this tournament. That is absolutely right. Uh, we do have three Zergs and one Protoss uh, who got as far as uh, the bracket finals. Indeed, so we're just going to have to see what kind of play Davathor goes for in these games. He is just one of his styles that he's mentioned a lot on your stream is the No Colossus uh, theme, which he goes with. Yes. Of course, that has a lot of issues against the Hydralisks as a unit, due to the fact that Colossus generally hard counters the Hydralisk. But of course, if you have adequate storm control, you can deal a quite moderate amount of damage. To yeah, and we saw yesterday that uh, Madeline actually uh, likes to go Hydras in certain situations versus Protoss. We saw him defending a 7-gate push very successfully with a quick a Hydra build on two bases and taking a third base later on. Devathor will be looking to build his forge now that he built his Nexus on 15 no less. Uh, so he's doing a very greedy opening, meanwhile Magellan opening up safely, uh, getting that pool and trying to clear the space below his, uh, below his main to build down, uh, to put down a natural expansion, but the third already has gone up. Absolutely, so having the third up will just keep him in that nice spot that he wants to be in, and the thing about Medjolin is he does some very good two base plays from what we saw yesterday. I don't believe I saw a single game where he seemingly wanted to be on three base prior to when he was ready. And despite the first game, he was on three base, but he wasn't saturated three base. He never really went above 60 drones either. He was just at a comfortable low level, but managed to keep up with his opponent despite that position. Yeah. So, Dave almost snuck the probe in. Almost, but it got caught by this uh, by this one Zergling who, uh, Zergling who is going to go ahead and chase it away. But Dave got that crucial piece of information uh, from that scout that the natural actually is up. He's just uh, putting this uh, probe here on hold position while his gateways are getting up. Uh, we do have one gas immediately being taken, but not a second one. This is really surprising. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a very fast warp gate timing on seven or eight gates with just mainly zealots. You can do this off of one gas, but as we know, as you mentioned so rightly earlier in this game, David Thor likes to go his weird no colossus style, a very quick third expansion, and he's only using one gas to do it whenever whenever he does that. And yeah, here we see the cyber core and the rocks being immediately attacked by this very cleverly positioned cannon. Uh, so yes, he will be looking to take that third base quite quite quickly. And it's all going to come down to if the Overlord decides to spot if the cannon is uh, taking down the rocks, or even if a Zergling runs down to just check the rocks. Because right now Medjolin's using his little cutesy uh, back and forth run arounds to keep map control, know if any probe is coming out. And this gives him complete vision. He knows if anything leaves this area that his opponent is trapped in. And now if the Overlord, he's going to see the third base, and he'll probably flood Lings or something to try and terminate it. Which yes. would be ideal for Dave, because it would set his opponent's economy behind. slightly further behind, because he's using his lava. Yeah, and we know that Dave is very, very good at defending these very early Lings. We saw that uh, previously in the previous tournament. On this very map, versus, I believe it was Hordon, actually... And what Hardon did was he just wanted to kill this straight up. So he just massed Ling's roaches as soon as he could. But 
Dave su uh, successfully defended with very few units and he was considerably ahead uh, later on lost the game due to uh, it due to not hitting, uh, hitting a uh, pre-letter timing of course but we had quite a few battles where it looked like he would be able to push the Zerg all the way back not allowing a remax and uh, and beating him didn't happen so the third base for the Protoss goes up. Lair is out of the way. Evolution Chamber just now finished. Uh, do we have a Roach Warren anywhere? Yes, we do. Uh, what's the drone count looking like? Drone count is looking quite good, but it's interesting to see the Spore Crawlers going down, which implies uh, Medjolin is quite paranoid about potentially Dark Templar Stargate play, but he hasn't scouted anything of his opponent. There's a lot of empty space he hasn't checked through, so it's just a precautionary measure because he hasn't seen anything that he's putting those down. But he's going to start to realize it was a waste as the game goes on. Yeah, not to mention that the Overlord that just died in uh, David Thor's base would not have seen anything anyways because the main is completely empty from buildings. Now this is very risky. You have to hold on to your natural and your third as much as you can because all your tech is in there. If ever these one of these two ramps got busted and links got in, you lose your robo, you lose your core, you lose your forge. At the third, you lose a whole bunch of gateways uh, every time you get attacked. Uh, and uh, another overlord getting killed in uh, the main of Devothor. Uh, so yeah, Magellan trying to go for a scout, not really sure what his opponent is doing. He knows a third base is up, but he does not really... Oh, he knows about the robo. Okay, but uh, that doesn't really tell him anything. Could be just for observers. Other than Indeed. that, he has no idea as uh, to the tech choice of his opponent so far. So Dave is taking his second forge. He's getting his Twilight Council at the, roughly the right time to have his plus two attack. If he'd have slipped an extra Chrono Boost onto there, it would be a perfect timing. So it's going to be interesting to see if he goes for the charge. It will be his Zealot Archon Speed Mothership style, which is very, very nice. And honestly, I don't see much chance of his opponent doing great at the moment because he's taken such a late fourth base yeah. compared to what he should have done. He's just generally being slightly behind at the moment. So this Dave is... has his edge and he's gone for Blink, which is quite surprising. Hmm. This is actually quite funny what you mentioned with the base timings because um, earlier on, earlier on in... Uh you know, in the beta and early days of StarCraft, um, w w this matchup was used to be played, okay, Protoss opens one gate and the Zerg has to hold on to his uh, two, um, uh, two bases and uh, then you defend and then you're fine. Uh, but as soon as uh, you see the Protoss going for something like a Forge Fast Expand, you take a fast third, like v very fast third, which is what we're seeing now. And we have a Ling run by into the natural a uh, nice and force field there, one oh. Ling only getting through. But Dave already has his defenses set up, and that one Ling's going to do nothing apart from get the scouting information on the additional gateways, the Twilight Council, the Forge. So his opponent will know the double upgrades there, he will know Twilight Council is there. So he's going to be potentially wary of Dark Templar, Twilight, uh, Templar, Templar Archives, or as I like to call it, the, the VC, because <laughs> I can never remember its name. <laughs> So uh, what I was getting on with that, with those base timings, it's quite funny yes. that you mentioned that because Medulin saw David Thor taking a very fast third base. So ordinarily, a response to that would be taking a very fast fourth base. But here we are getting to a point in time where only just taking bases will open you to more and more timing windows from your opponent. So <laughs> you just kind of, you know, as, as it gets above the three base in the early game or mid game, you can't really take a very fast fourth because mm -hmm. you're not even saturated on two bases. Why would you take a fourth? And then you get attacked and, t and 10 or 12 minutes and you die. Although the interesting part for me was the fact that he took the macro hatchery in his main base before taking the fourth. Yeah. If that had been planted there, he could have got the gas and <coughs> that would have uh, sped him faster towards his infestor production, his broodlord uh, potential. And that's the sort of thing he wants to be going towards when his opponent has taken the fast third. Yeah, and from Dave, we are seeing that the Stargate is already up. Upgrades are a rolling. 
So he will be on plus three, plus two momentarily. Fourth base is being set up at this point in time. He's sending one Zola to scout if the fourth of the Zerg is up, which it is, and four Spankros will just uh, make short work of the Zealot. And he saw the Infestors, I think, so he knows <coughs> he knows there are at least some on the field. And, you know, but he, he basically has the Mothership transition almost ready. The Fleet Beacon is happily building. There are still no Colossi out, and a War Prism is somewhere out on the map. Yes. Yes, the warp prism is just below the fourth base, completely prepared to move and do anything that it is required to. But thus far, I don't want to bash on Medlin a bit, but it is the 15 minute mark and his creep tumor, it is, has just been one creep tumor spreading, but that could have been a lot further by now. Having a at least moved around the front of his fourth base a long time ago would have given him much superior vision for holding off any kind of attacks. Yeah, another thing, the hive timing is a little bit late and you know, he's gonna have Broodlord's earliest at 17 minute mark, which is I think by that time he Medellin will be hard pressed to defend his turf. Uh, at this time he also, sh also should have already been taking a fifth base. We do have a warping in the main of uh, Medellin. A lot of zealots are going there. They could actually kill this hive before it finishes. That would actually win the game for David though. It would be absolutely huge. And Medellin has it's to pull th his army from all the way across the map. It's very critical. He needs to start the greatest fire right now. He gets the greatest fire and that's the important part at least. The oh my god. has started production. So he will be able to def defend this, start his tech up again. He's already starting a new layer. And oh, this is beautiful. Dave just using that warp prism and oh, he's knocking the out the fourth base at the same time. He blinked in, taking a lot of the infestors out almost instantly. And he's still focus firing them down. The infestors, all of them on full energy. There's three left from, what was it, 12 before this? Yeah, and uh, just he just comfortably pulls back another warping of Zods at the main. He's going to get the not finished lair. He's going to get the spawning pool, which means no circlings. He knows he needs to get the spire. That is the critical point from right now. But he will get the lair. Lair not as important as the greater spire right now, though. But he could move in. Oh, is he going to squeeze into one of these infestors? Oh, the Zealot was not fast enough to catch it. And now Finally. The, out, the Warp Prism is not going to be able to do anything more offensive. Finally, it all gets cleaned hatchery. up, but... You know, the thir uh, the fourth base of the Zerg will just <laughs> never be mining. They're killed again, not even cancelled. And if you look at the resources lost, almost 8,000 lost for uh, for Medellin and only th less than 4,000 lost for, uh, uh, for Davithor. <coughs> Medellin does have this other hatch on the left side of the map, but it's not going to be doing him any good. The Great Aspire, ah, I believe it is still on creep, but that creep is receding as the hatch is no longer there. Maybe he, this creep tumor is keeping creep it alive. Creep tumor is in range to keep the creep alive. Uh, just I do barely, think. dude. <laughs> yes, the creep tumor will keep it alive, and all this lava will be kept alive by the creep tumor as well, so we will have a nice reserve there. So upon oh seeing God. the Broodlords, he can get his uh, Archons. He has the finances for it, but he's still warping in uh, Zealots, which I feel is a mistake. He needs to get the Archons, because he has now got the energy on his mothership for the Vortex. Yeah, Everything is so smoothly laying out for Dave right now. He just needs to defend his fourth base here, whilst he's just taken out the third again. Yeah, and he just, a few seconds ago, he also took down the fifth base, so... Wow! This is... Davithor is just pulling Medellin apart every which way. Medellin is stuck on Roach Infester. And he's down to one mining base. He can't even... He cannot even comfortably afford building another base. And at this point he just has to push. He has to do damage. He has to kill the army. But we do have the mothership. One Vortex could solve all the problems here. The fourth base quite possibly for... Uh, Davithor will go down, so but he's getting a backstab on the Broodlords! Oh, no Broodlords, one down, the Blink Hunter is very successful, three Broodlords will be dead before this ends, and he's even stored. Oh, oh my, ho oh. oh. He's just saying, you've lost, I can do anything I want at this point, get out of my game! Oh my goodness, he needs to get that Archon into the Vortex though, there we go, and... and all of these will die the 
instant. Oh, and oh. there they go. But this army is not quite well equipped enough to deal with the roaches, but the cloak is very effective. Oh, it is. There goes one fungal, and there Medulin leaves the game not even GGing out.